Hi, Simon Trezellian here, Voice of Reason. Today we're going to be talking about the death and hopefully the rebirth of education. Now, the Jesuits used to have a saying which was, give us the boy before seven and we'll give you the man. Because they knew that in that formative time, those initial seven years, that we become truly who we are. Uh, it's based upon the environment that we grow up in, the values that we're, we're given or we see, uh, the identity that we actually become. And that creates the character um, which determines our actions and our decisions, which then creates our behavior. Okay. So before 1979, education was largely done on a localized level. It was looked upon as what people actually needed within their communities. You know, you, where you had like um, you know, charter schools and you had like sometimes religious schools. You know, you had, you had schools very much uh, catering for the needs of the community. And then everything changed there in 1979 with Jimmy Carter created the Department of Education and then federal um, you know, federal government so I get involved in anything and as we know if the federal government gets involved in anything usually turns to crap and and it certainly has I mean you cannot say that we got 200 years of understanding education of being able to get it right of being able to, to define and perfect um, the way that we teach kids and it's not all that hard I mean really and yet what we see is that the statistics show that the amount of children graduating today without the ability to read or write uh, is, is stunning, absolutely stunning. And we see that the curriculums have changed so much so that it becomes more a, a social conditioning and indoctrination than an education. And this is going all the way up now into, uh, into the college as well, where you find that a lot of left-wing ideology, a lot of Marxist ideology, which has always been in education ac across the whole world. I mean, you know, we, we see that. Um, but what it does is it, it certainly doesn't prepare children for the real world. You know, they come out with this uh, Marxist ideological utopian viewpoint of what is likely to happen and then they get hit by the real world and it doesn't work from there on. So I think that what is going to happen in the next administration is that the, the Department of Education um, is going to be certainly wound down and given back to the states. And we see this in a number of areas. We saw this with the Roe versus Wade abortion um, system as well and I think that there's there's a lot of merit to putting things back to the states and, and having states rights um, because then you're catering for your own people the people that actually live in your community as opposed to this big government Orwellian decision-making megalith you know basically trying to do a one-size-fits-all especially with America which is you know over the size of Europe and, and has a number of very different um, sort of social areas and social, um, almost like different, not so much languages, um, but certain different ideologies. I mean, people from Texas are very different to Californians, which are very different to Floridians, which are very different to Appalachians and people from, you know, New York. So one size is never ever gonna fit, fit all. I mean, that, that's just the, the fact of the matter is. What the DOE did in the 70s and really moved into the 80s and 90s was to try and create a situation where more kids, especially kids from lower socioeconomic areas, would graduate, um, giving them a better chance in life. And I think that was obviously um, a very noble cause. But you only uh, you <laughs> but by allowing them to graduate with lower standards doesn't actually help in the real world. In the real world, people work on merit. People are usually promoted upon merit and not on DEI, which is another thing that's going to die. So there is going to be a lot of things that are going to disappear within the next four years and, and they should disappear. Uh, one of them is the CRT, critical race theory. When you're basically pitting young impressionable kids against each other, either trying to make one part of the populace feel guilty and the other feel victimized. I mean, how is that ever going to work? How is it ever going to be positive? You know, that is only going to end badly. You know, it's going to end in some form of either rebellion or resentment or 
something that is just not going to go right. So that, I think, is going to be brushed away, and so it should be. Uh, DEI, again, diversity, equity, and inclusion. I mean, where does merit ever come into this? You know, when you place your thumb on the scales, again, it creates this whole generation of victims and it gives people the excuse for poor performance. No one wants poor performance. You wouldn't want poor performance in your sports team. You wouldn't want it in your own business. Why would you want it in your country? You know, I think that the, the key is not to actually uh, do affirmative action, which is another thing that's going to be dying as well. That, that will not um, uh, move forward. And that's obviously being backed up by the Supreme Court. Affirmative action does the same thing. It actually prioritizes one race over another, which is essentially the definition of racism. And, and it should ne just never happen. So why not just raise the standards of everyone? Wouldn't that be much easier? Because in, in acknowledging DEI, you're actually pushing minorities down even further. Because they're saying, look, we're gonna have to help you because you can't help yourself. You know, and that is just such a wrong message. You know, we, sh we should be trying to bring people up to a new standard, you know, so that they feel that they can do things with integrity, you know, in their own, in their own manner, with their, under their own steam. You know, life, it, life is not a fair place, and it, it, it never has been. And, and that's the same for any species. It really isn't a fair place. You've just got to do the best you can, given the, the playing field that you're on. Another thing that's going to be withering on the vine is, is this whole trans movement. I, I think now people are very, very weary of, of having this thrown on them and then being called a, a bigot or, or something like that if they don't want their own children, especially their own girl children, having to you know, be in a locker room with, uh, with boys. I mean, it doesn't seem to work the other way. And that's, and that's what I think really is uh, annoying a lot of people. You know, we know, we, you do not need to be, you know, a scientist to understand that, that human beings, you know, are different. Men are different. I mean, look at me. I'm a bull of a guy, right? If I was the same as a woman, no woman looks like me. You know, I'm stronger, I'm more powerful than, than any peer of woman. And, and that's how things are. I didn't ask for that. That's just nature. And, and, and I think that we just need to get back to being sensible and being reasonable and understanding and celebrating the difference between males and females as opposed to just trying to make mediocre men, you know, start becoming sports stars in, in, the, in the female realm. That to me is totally unfair, you know, and it, it takes women away from scholarships. Um, it creates something, it creates a lot of resentment and of course people haven't been able to voice that resentment because the fear of being called a bigot and things like that. So again, it just sets a, a totally different theme. So all the work that they did on Title IX to bring women into some form of parity at least, so that at least they could actually have similar types of opportunities in sports and education and they're just totally destroying all of that. I mean, where are the feminists when it comes to this? I mean, it just seems to be an absolutely ridiculous thing. Um, and as for restrooms, I mean, I know what I would do if, if, if there was a man in, in my daughter's restroom and it wouldn't be very fun for them. I mean, and it's not fun for the girls. Why would you subject girls to that, which make up 50% of the population because of the, and I have to say it, because of the mental illness of someone who is less than 0.1% of the populace. Why do you have to change the rules for 100% for of the people for such a small percentage? It doesn't make sense at all. And this whole pandering to such a small group um, and is one of the reasons that uh, people just said enough. Normal people. Yeah, not bigots, not racists, not misogynists. Normal people said enough is enough. The other thing that you're gonna see draw down is drag queens, and quite right. Drag queens are fun, they're great, but they shouldn't be talking to our children, yeah? Why is it they only wanna to speak to children? Why don't they speak to adults, especially gay adults, or, or 
adults that just want to have a fun time. Drag queens are funny, you know? And, and they always have been. We've, I mean, I grew up in the 70s and you had all sorts of, you know, you had Danny LaRue and you had, I mean, God, I'm aging myself now. Um, but you had these people and, and we just realized, hey, Dame Edna Everidge is another one, right? We realized that these were guys playing dress up and it was comedic. It was okay, it was fun. But as soon as you start touching our children, nah, 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 that's not gonna fly. And, and I think this whole drag queen story time is the creepiest, horrible thing that I can even imagine. You know, I mean, every one of your deepest, darkest nightmares is involved in that. And of course, if you say anything, then other people in the past have said, oh, you know, you, you're not accepting and you're a bigot and all this type of thing. But people, normal people have said no. And you're gonna see that go down. So there's a lot of good things I think are going to happen in the education field now as we resurrect. And I think that um, putting, uh, uh, what's the name, McMahon in charge of the DOE is not to boost it up. It's not to make it more efficient. It's to wind it down. And that's what she's doing. She's a businesswoman. She knows how to wind down a business. She knows how to make a, a business work. So that's actually going to happen. And I think that a lot of these school boards where we've had real problems, where they've gone against the, um, the will of the people, the will of parents, certainly in regards to things like transgender surgeries and all that, that's going to go. And, and I think that there will be uh, localized laws now which will um, bring these school boards into line with actually getting them to educate. Why do they not have a curriculum which, which prepares kids for, for the real world? Things like tell them about taxation, tell them about how to lease a car, tell them how, you know, how to structure their finances, how to actually communicate, you know, public speaking, confidence. You know, these are the things that we should be teaching our kids as well as the normal mathematics and science and STEM, you know, and, and, and literature. You know, we should always be doing that, but why not give them life skills as well? Wouldn't that be just so much better than trying to indoctrinate them into political ideology? I just think that that's a reasonable expectation for our kids, you know, and, and parents should be absolutely consulted on every aspect of their kids' education. But you've got to remember, until that child is 18, it's the responsibility of the parents, not the state. The children do not belong to the community. They belong to the parents who, who birthed them into this world. And they are legally responsible for them until the age of 18. So allow parents to do their jobs. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, there's no manuals. Yeah, we don't get training as to how to be a parent. We do the best that we can. Uh, and I think that good thing is is that parents usually do it with love governments never do anything with love so that's me that's Simon Tresellian food for thought voice of reason out to you bye bye now